What's one of the best things you need to be doing when it's cold and nasty? It's cold like it is this morning. What do you do in the wintertime like this? Happy New Year. Good morning, guys and girls. January 1, it is cold like it's supposed to be on January 1, but we are starting a new year, 2021. A lot of people said we got to get 2020 behind us. Well, we have done that, and uh, we're going to start a brand new. It's going to be a great year. Let's look and see what we got. We're going to start in Genesis 1-1. What better place to start? You know, uh, we ended the year in Revelation, which is the end of the Bible. We start the year Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the sky and the earth. In the beginning, God created the sky and the earth. First thing that God did, and he just created and created and created. It took a whole week to do it. Created and created and created. Finally created a guy, ripped a rib out, created a woman. <laughs> Isn't that great? Okay, here's what I wrote about that. It's always exciting to begin something new, like a new job, a new house, a new marriage, or starting a new family. It's always great when you, you get married and you, you find out, well, I guess it's great for most people. Uh, you're going to save a family. You've got a little boy or girl coming along. Maybe both at the same time. New projects excite and energize me. I just got to be doing something new. I got to be doing something different. I got to be accomplishing something. I'm one of those guys that's just got to be accomplishing something to feel like that I've had, a, I've had a great day. I'm always excited about beginning a new tournament season where all the fishermen start out again at zero. Zero pounds, zero points. Everybody's in the same place, dead first. Or a pessimist might say dead last. I can't wait for the start of the Major League Baseball season or for the first game of Oklahoma University, football or basketball or baseball or softball. I love it all. One tradition I started more than, since you're 35, but more than 50 years ago was to begin each January 1 and read the Bible through, completely through in one year. Get one of those daily Bibles, and I read it completely through in one year. Now, that takes commitment. That's the big thing is it takes commitment. Uh, you know, you just need to set aside a time each day that you're going to do it, or you just need to be committed that if you get a day behind, you're going to catch up real quickly. And, and you're going to get a day or two behind. But what you want to do is you don't want to go four or five or six days because if you get very far behind, you'll never catch up. You get down to February and March, and you'll be six or seven or eight days behind, and you'll just say, uh, what the heck? And you just won't do it. So you got to have a plan of attack. You got to be committed. So you want to make that commitment to yourself. You want to make that commitment to God. I'm going to read your word completely through this year. A lot of you read the Bible a lot of times. Some of you may have never read the Bible completely through in your whole life, in your whole life, read the entire thing. But let me tell you, God will talk to you in magic ways when you do that. So uh, you, you have your little plan, but the biggest thing is a commitment. Now, let me tell you something else, dude. You know, I fly a lot on airplanes. I haven't flown much in 2020 because most of the events were canceled. But uh, I fly a lot. I read them when I'm waiting in the airport. I read them on the airplane. And, and, and it's a pretty good witness to let people know if you pull out a Bible and start reading it on an airplane, the guy beside you might not even order a liquor drink. <laughs> well, most of them do. But some of them, sometimes they don't. Oh, just bring me a Coke. Maybe I'll have a Coke Zero like Jimmy. <laughs> but uh, but, but I, I read them on the Bible. I, I read them on airplanes. I read them while I'm waiting in, at the airport. I read them in my hotel rooms. Uh, but I just never get behind. That's the main thing is don't ever get behind. I get ready to go to the bathroom. I grab a Bible, and I know I've always wondered about that, if that was disrespecting God, if I'm going to go to the bathroom and read the Bible while I'm in here for five minutes. But that's all it takes is about five minutes a day to read the Bible completely through in a year. There's a lot of different versions. I've read every single one of them that's been printed in English uh, on the daily Bible reading. Some of them just start at Genesis, and you read all the way through. Most of them will have uh, the Old Testament. Uh, some Psalms, some Proverbs, and a New Testament all in one day's reading. So you're just reading a little bit of both. And it's amazing how it coincides as you go through the year. But but uh, anyway, that's uh, that's one thing that is really, really good to do. Now, I completely read the Bible through, and it says here more than 30 times, actually more than 50 times now. I started when I was like 25 or 26 years old. I wrote this book back in 2005. We got another book just about finished, just about finished. I only got about 20 or 30 more uh, scripture uh, devotionals to write. We'll be able to turn that into Nelson Publishing. This is in addition to my other Bible reading and study. Start your very own tradition today. That's what I'm recommending. Start your own very your very own tradition today. Five, 10, 20 years from now, you'll be amazed at what God wants to tell you on a daily basis. 
God's word is a living word. And the amazing thing is, I wrote this in 2005. So many things that happened in 2020 when we went through on this Catch of the Day channel were relevant to what was happening on June 4th or April 16th or December 30th. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. And so it's all the living word of God. And if you read that Bible through in a year's time, like I said, you'll be amazed at what God wants to tell you on an everyday basis, on an everyday basis. We're covering one scripture here every single day on the catch of the day. And by the way, share this channel with everybody you can. Uh, we got 10,000 people on here. We certainly need to have 20,000 on as quick as possible. I imagine it'll double throughout this year, but it might triple or quadruple as the year goes on. Okay, let's look at our fishing tip. This is a good one. What do you do during the winter, buds? I know some of you said, well, let's make love. <laughs> That's what Chris would say. <laughs> Don't you tell her I said that, please. Okay, use the cold weather boots to clean and organize all your tackle to get ready for that great spring bassin. Use these winter months to get everything ready. When it's cold and nasty and you don't want to go fishing, and I got to be honest with you, I don't like to fish when it's cold like today. Uh, but we catch some of the biggest bass that we catch all year long in January, February, and March. I'm probably going to uh, I'm probably going to go fishing here in just a few days to, as my quest that Josh Jones and I, we have a quest to try to catch a state record. He fishes every day. He'll probably be the one that catches it, not me. But uh, but we, we he, he caught one that weighed 12 pounds just last week, 1288, the biggest bass he's ever caught in his lifetime, 1288, 1288. Is that amazing? And uh, biggest I've ever caught thirteen one. So him and I have got about the same size. Biggest fish Chris ever caught 1262. So uh, we're going to catch some over 13 pounds this year. I just know it. I just know it. So uh, we're going to be out there, but we're I try to pick the days when it's going to be like at least 55 or 60 degrees. I don't mind it being like it is right now, 25 or 30 degrees in the morning, but if you'll just get up to about 60 where your hands don't freeze to death and you can get out of some of those heavy clothes you got on, it makes the day a whole lot better. I mean, just a whole lot better. Guys and girls, we're starting a brand new year. I know a lot of you are here with me every single day last year. Let's try to do it again. Share this thing with all your friends and buddies. Tell everybody about it. Tell the people down at church, the men's group down there, the youth groups. Get involved in the catch of the day. It will definitely change your life. It's changed mine to have a closer relationship with Jesus Christ, my Savior. Guys and girls, go out there and have you a great one today. And remember, I sure do love you.